Good day. I'm Roberta Winters, President of the League of Women Voters of Radnor Township, and I'm delighted to have with me today Representative Greg Vitale. He has been representing the 166th District of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for many years. Greg, just how long have you been serving? This will be my 25th year, but, but first of all, I just want to thank you, uh, not only for inviting me today, but you have been doing great work, both in an individual capacity and with the League of Women Voters, not only on Marcella Shale issues and trying to make that as safe and responsible as possible, but us also generally with regard to good government. You, you guys do a great job and you provide an invaluable service to the community, so thank you personally and thank the League. Well, I know for many years campaign financing has been an issue for the League of Women Voters, and we know with what's going on in Harrisburg, there's a lot of money that's been coming through the industries that support natural gas operations in our Commonwealth, and I'm sure that's making a difference for you, Greg, and also for legislators throughout the Commonwealth. Well, that's right. I mean, the issues we really care about, uh, they are not getting a fair hearing because of the influence of special interest group money and the... Um, topic today, Marcellus Money in the Pennsylvania Legislature, really is an effort to sort of quantify and expose that undue influence in an effort to really make things better. Well, we all know data makes a difference in our world. Yeah. And the more information we have, the better decisions we can make. So, so do you have something to share with us about what Marcellus Money is doing in this whole process? Well, that's the whole, yeah, that's, that has been my project. I mean, because what we decided to do, and this was born out of the frustration of this, this failure to really um, get good legislation done and stopping bad legislation. I mean, you know, just by being in Harrisburg, what's going on. I mean, you see the lobbyists. If you, if you have a, a, a committee hearing, you just see the well-heeled lobbyists packing the back. Every time you go through a congestion point in the Capitol, you see them just standing there with their iPhones and, and so forth. You see the lobbying that goes on. Um, you know the money that's being given. And, and you know that there's this very strong relationship about things like not being able to get a severance tax gun, uh, not being able to get drilling regulations passed, not being able to do this other stuff. You know there's this strong uh, correlation and, and, and so, so, so what I try to do is just quantify what to me is very obvious intuitively. So what we've, what we've done is this and before I go any further I want to say um, Common Cause of Pennsylvania has done a great job in gathering this stuff. Uh, PA Conservation Voters has done a great job in gathering this stuff and we have built on what they've done. We've used some of their data, we've taken it forward We've used some of their ideas. We've expanded them. But people like Barry Kaufman, who you know and others, right. have just done a great job here. So we've sort of moved what they've done forward. So um, th this is what we've done, starting with their data. We looked at all the lobbying reports uh, that, that, that lobbyists they've identified uh, related to drilling. All the reports, they have to file quarterly reports. So all their lobbying reports for 2016 and 2015. We also looked at all the campaign finance reports for 2016. We all lo also looked at every legislator's um, statement of financial interest, their ethics statement, and we tried to just sort of analyze the flow of, of money. Yeah, so. That's a lot of work. It, it's a lot of work, and happily I have staff who does that, so I don't have to do it myself. But yeah, um, and, and uh, we've really, you know, we've really kind of quantified uh, what we kind of knew intuitively, which is A, uh, the drilling industry gives a lo lot of money to um, uh, legislators generally, but, uh, and also there are just uh, tons of lobbyists in Harris. We found actually 203 different lobbyists who are uh, employed by the drilling industry. And, and the, the, the coincidence was there's 203 state house members and there's 203 lobbyists. It's like we all have our own lobbyists, which kind of shows you the scale of the problem here. Well, I think the audience would probably love to see some of the data you've collected, Absolutely. Greg. Okay. So I think if we could have the next slide, I think that goes into what the purpose of this presentation is today and yeah. why you have been working so hard to inform people 
about what is happening in that commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so, so in addition to showing this um, you know, large amount of money and the consequences we talked about too already, we talked about failing to get a severance tax done, failing to get the uh, conventional drilling reg, uh, regs done, uh, also just things like, basic things like um, a royalty protection bill. So landowners who, who lease their money to drillers aren't, aren't cheated out of uh, their royalties, which frankly some are being now, oh. uh, getting that bill passed that gives them some minimum payment. And then also things like just getting renewable energy done, you know, maybe expanding our alternative energy portfolio standards. So the consequences are just failing to get important stuff done. And then, and, th and I think we all also, you know, given that, uh, you know, we wanted to sort of just analyze what what the problem is. The fact that um, you know our campaign, we have no contribution limits in Pennsylvania. Uh, our our uh, uh, threshold for reporting requirements are just so weak. There's just a, a lot of there's um, gifts. There's no gift ban in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Other things that we really ne desperately need. Well, what did you find out about the campaign finance? I think our next slide will show some of the amounts of money that people have. Uh, received. Well, right, yeah. So you see some of these the big big drilling companies and the amounts of money they're giving in uh, uh, th they gave last year. And um, I mean, the reality is, and um, you know, you you remember the former uh, politician uh, from 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 Delaware County, Clarence Bell. He said, "People, you know, people don't give money to politicians because they're philanthropists. They expect something in return, and they certainly." do and I think these companies who who give these large sums of money I mean there is I mean it's hard to prove a uh, quid quo pro unless you're wired by the FBI or something but 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 uh, short of that I mean you there is this expectation and things like not having to pay a severance tax which saves them you know hundreds of millions of dollars and not uh, suffering the expense of, of, of complying with these regulations so so you have these companies giving large sums of money uh, and, and, and how they give it is uh, very strategic. Well, is it, do you, did you find anything about how it's given in terms of is it equally given to every legislator or do some legislators get more money than others? I think there's a slide that shows that, isn't there, about one of the House representatives, the uh, key fundings? Yeah, yeah, I, and I think what we've, what we've found is that the money is targeted to those people who um, really control the flow of legislation. And, and as the House and Senate are controlled by Republicans now, they are the people who are getting the money. And, the peop and, and more specifically, not, not the rank and file members, but the people who control the calendar, the people who really control what bills are run and what bills are not run. And uh, Speaker Terzai, Terzai, and I'll say this, I like Isn't that the Terzai. next slide about Speaker yeah, Terzai? Yeah. So he's the one who controls how legislation moves to the floor, in other words, yeah. and when it is. Yeah, and and uh, and I, I like Michael Terzai. I'm not saying anything bad against him. Uh, he, he conducts himself very well on, on in, in the um, House proceedings. But uh, you see, he's the top money uh, getter here. And... Um, uh, and that's not surprising because because um, that is important to drillers when when bills are run and when, when bills are not run. So it's not it's not surprising that people who control the flow of legislation get the money. And I think the next slide is an interesting thing. And the idea was you know brought up by again by Common Cause and the, and their great work. But but on the environmental committee, you look at the chairman of the environmental committee if you go back to that previous slide you'll see that the chairman of that committee before he was a chairman got very little of the environmental committee he was the ag chairman two terms ago right got very little you'll see on that slide from uh from the drilling interests but once he became in 214 but in 215 once he became a chairman and then 216 again he got you know 10 times as much money because they, they know, they, they give the money to people who control the flow of legislation because they know the effect money has. And I think one of the most important bills that went through our committee, the Environmental Committee, when I was on it, uh, was that bill that killed the conventional drilling regulations. That was Senate Bill um, 279, which eventually um, became law. So I mean, it's just, it j that slide just il illustrates the point that 
they give the money very strategically to people who control the flow of legislation. So basically, the lobbyists have a big role to play in this, correct? And I think that was one of the things you looked yeah, yeah, at yeah. as well, was with the lobbyists, right? So they've right. got the strategic money coming in to our representatives, and then you have the lobbyists. Yeah. So, would, so, you, so would you like to, you, you mentioned there were 203 lobbyists, yeah. and that's what that slide shows. Yeah, see it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's almost like two sides of the same coin. I mean, on, on one side is the campaign contributions that come in from the PACs related to the drilling interest. But on the other side, it's the ac actual lobbyists who don't give campaign contribution, but they do the whining, the dining, the meals, the golf games, the cigars, and all the rest. And, and uh, they sort of make the pitch. I mean, they're, they're, their approach the lobbyist approach is kind of to become your friend. I mean, they, you know, they give you stuff, they take you to the ball games, they want to become your friend because when they need something, when they didn't ask, when they didn't need a no vote on the conventional drilling regs, you know, it's like, can you help me out of here? Can you give me this? Because, you know, friends help friends. You know, so it's almost like two sides of the same coin. But I think the money piece of it, I mean, if you ask, ask people in the know, the money piece of it is, is more corrupting than the lobbying piece of it, but they're but they're really just it's almost like a one-two punch in 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 uh, wielding influence. Well, we're talking about millions of dollars. We are. I mean, seven yeah. million dollars into the, uh, you know, yeah. it was showing the seven million dollars yeah. just last year, and we don't have enough money for public education and other things, but we're spending right. millions yeah. of dollars for lobbying. Right. I think yeah, over sixty million dollars in the past ten years was spent by the oil and gas interest, uh, industry and lobby. And, and, and that's sort of money well spent because you, you, if you think about what they're saving by successfully lobbying and what they're forcing the taxpayers to pay, uh, I mean, uh, and, and, uh, and another slide in here somewhere shows um, if we had enacted the severance right, tax a number of years up. ago, mm -hmm. it would be like, you know, by now I'm sure it would be like $1.5 billion. Dollars. It's, it's, it's some huge huge sum of money. Well, these lobbyists that we've been talking about come sometimes come from this Marcella Shale coalition, so it's not necessarily an individual company like Sunoco or Consul, but they get together and, and lobby legislators. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, well, the Marcella um, coalition is just sort of this um, umbrella group who, who hire, who has four lobbyists themselves, and they they spent, they, they have been spending at a clip of, of almost a million a year through uh, 2015, and through an odd quirk, which I won't even get into, that somehow mysteriously dropped. Um, but but they they are um, sort of the umbrella group that sort of uh, leads the charge. But um, uh, and what we did to get this 203 figures, we looked at all of the lobbying reports for all of these 40 one or two um, gas related, drilling related uh, lobbying reports and then we just sort of just added them all up and we put them on our, our website too so you it's can amazing, check that out. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's way too much. Don't lobbyists have to report what they're spending? So if they took you out to yeah. lunch or they yeah, took yeah. you to a golf okay. game or something like that? So, so what you see now on that screen, that is the entire uh, expense report for uh, uh, about a million dollars worth of spending. You got three pages and virtually no information. There's no bill numbers, no legislators names. Um, this is all the law requires them to report. It's it's really um, wholly inadequate. And, and I think the big problem is the, the reporting thresholds are too high. When we pass that lobbying bill, oh, maybe 10 years ago, it was Bally, who does this you know, great reform. I voted against it because I knew exactly what it was, it was the perception of reform. I mean, you, you, you um, the threshold, um, I think it's 250 for, for, for gifts and, 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 and 650 for... You mean uh, $250,000 or um, $250? I'm sorry. 250 dollars for gifts and uh, $650 for, for meals, hospitality, and lodging. And the way they manipulate it, it all is under the radar. They, you, you, they, they play the game so that no, no monies uh, actually, you don't see on their reports any legislators' names. And I think that's the, pro that's the problem. That's, that's the problem. Two, 
to shape conduct, you need to have a legislator revealed in his own district as having taken stuff from lobbyists consistent with a vote that the public would not approve of. In other words, you, you, need, a, you need reports that show um, you know, what, what, you know, what lobbyist is giving what amount of money to what legislator for what bill. And if, you, if that information were in the public, let's say we had a vote on the severance tax, right. and, a, and a, let's say a Delaware County legislator voted uh, against it, uh, but he also, that report showed that, you know, he was given these meals on this day for this bill because it's all in the reports, you know, and that was reported concurrently in the same news article that reported the vote. In other words, if, if, if that were really accessible and reporters in doing their job, reporting votes on that could just report, you know, their constituents say, you know, what do you mean you voted <laughs> against this? Why, why are you taking? But you also went to the Phillies game with with with, with Exxon, and and you know it's it's then when you get stung like that as a politician, then that shapes conduct. But unless you can connect, but right now they keep it all under the radar, so you can't connect the dots. So so that's that's the kind of thing you need. Well, don't legislators legislators have to report something too? I think the next slide shows us what some of the legislators have done. Doesn't that tell you who they've taken yeah, money well, from? Yeah. Again, so so, th so so we have to. I have to. Every every you know legislator, House and Senate has to file what's what's known as a statement of financial interest. We file that every May, and it and it theoretically shows things like gifts, hospitality, transportation lodging. But again, the ref reporting thresholds are so high that although you see it being given, you see the meals and all the rest, um, and this is, this is Dave Reed, the majority leader's report, and he would be a prime candidate for the, being the recipient of these things because he's one of the most influential guys up there. But that report shows nothing, that, he, that he's reporting nothing for the entire year. And it's not because he received nothing. It's because the, the, the thresholds are so high that nothing was reported. And again, I like Dave Reed. Dave Reed's a nice guy. He's bright and, and all the rest. But, you know, this his report shows a real problem. It shows that we need to um, lower, well, we need to do more than lower the threshold requirements. Legislators should not be receiving gifts, period. Nothing. And, and a nice bright line. Lobbyists, the role of lobbyists are not to be our friends. Lobbyists have a very valuable role. Lob and they have a constitutionally protected role. They're, they, everyone has a right to petition their government. And government works better when we hear everybody. We hear the drilling industry, we hear the environmentalists, we hear everybody. So we can just sort of sift through all the arguments, almost like a judge, hear both sides, and make our decision. They're entitled to do that, but they should be doing it in our offices during business hours. And, and they should not, there's no reason they ought to be buying us Phillies tickets or meals at one of those high-priced restaurants in, in, in Harrisburg or buying us cigars. No reason for that at all. It all ought to be banned. And, and even if you don't do that, the, all, the backup approach is what they call first penny disclosure. In other words, um, everything, even a cup of coffee, if it's given, it, it ought to be reported. Um, well, with all this money going around Harrisburg, mm -hmm. does it seem to make a difference in the legislation that's passed or the policies that have got? What well, have yeah. you found out about that? With the consequences of all this money, or is it just yeah. that it's flowing out there? Can we see? Uh, I think there's a slide on that, right? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you, we you talked about the severance, severance tax. tax, and and uh, uh, this year, and I got these figures from the uh, um, uh, administration itself, l losing 153. Million, we would have gotten 153 million if we had a reasonable severance tax uh, this this fiscal year that we're currently ending up, and that's 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 still important because um, Governor Wolf this year uh, for fiscal year 17-18 has proposed a 6.5 percent severance tax, and we and, and we just desperately need the money. We have this three billion dollar a year.
structural deficit. We we need the money, and there's and and uh, and the consequences of the influence of this drilling industry is we're not getting money we needed, and guess who pays instead? You know me, you, and and everybody else. It's we we pay it, it because they don't, or uh, we get less money than we need for things like. You know, education. Our classroom sizes are a little bigger than they should be. We're not getting some of the you know uh, extra curriculums we should be. You know, uh, our, our our school taxes are higher than they should be. Everyone has to pay their fair share, and that's that's what's not happening. And it's not happening because of of, of special interest group money. So you've mentioned that we've got problems with mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. the financing, we've got problems with the lobbyists, and it's mm -hmm. imp impacting the legislature. What mm -hmm. do you see we could do to change it? I think you had a couple of slides on that. I think the next slide talks about one of the things we could change. Right, right, right. So, so um, again, we were talking about campaign finance reform and how we're only one of about 10 or 11 states that don't have contribution limits. Definitely ought to get them. And we have, um, bills are introduced every term that uh, do that. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough lift. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath waiting this term, although it uh, should happen. But, but one, one thing I think that is um, a much easier lift is making the state's campaign reporting database, make, making its searching capabilities much easier. Well, I think they have a slide on that too, don't yeah, you, yeah. about how we can uh, improve the Pennsylvania Department of State yeah. campaign finance search site because it's important. I know the League of Women Voters is always looking for ways to figure out, you know, information about candidates to help people make a good choice. Yeah, because because I you know because we actually and and we sort of uh, not only ha have good government groups like yourself and and and, and Common Cause talk to us about the problems they have with this, the search capabilities. They're really archaic in this world where you can do you know, so much with your own iPhone. Um, why the Department of State's site is so archaic? I mean, just the ability to, to do searches between uh, reporting cycles, or it, it's just really problematic. We sat down, actually a local person, uh, Marion Schneider, is, is really has a, a key role in the Department of State on that, and we've met with the Department of State several times on this, and, they're, and they're, they say they're working on it. Um, but just the ability to, to use the reports that are out there to let reporters really quicker, quickly and accurately just see, okay, uh, we just, uh, just killed the uh, Severance tax bill. Okay, let's let's see who's given this. You know, let's let's see how much the speaker has gotten <laughs> from you know the, these groups. So, so you can do these real quick searches and reporting, and just let the public connect the dots. It's and 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 I think I think the interesting thing is I think one reason the Department of State is struggling with this is is because there's no requirement that campaign expense reports be filed electronically. You can choose to do paper reports or electronic reports. And um, because a lot of people do the paper reports, it really slows everything down. But in this day and age, unless you, you, you can get a hardship exemption or so forth, we all ought, ought to be filing them electronically, and if you need an exception, you need an exception, and that's fine. So, so like state, you know, you're doing your income tax, right? Yeah. You can do it electronically and just push the button and it goes yeah. in, or you can do it yeah. by hand. But a simple, a simple bill and, and a simple law uh, that would require they all be filed electronically with exceptions would really help us create that. And that's something Governor Wool, frankly, can do right now. That's something that he ought to be doing, and and I think that. So if you want the low-hanging fruit, if if you know you, if you're not you know it, it's going to be a tough lift, the contribution limits. But if you're looking for something, a f good first step, I think that is a good first step. What about lobbyist disclosure? Is that a place you could go as well? I mean, you you certainly uh, should have these. Um, you, I mean, we talked about the gift ban, right? Uh, that that would be, I think, the simplest thing to do. The gift ban, uh, the first penny, di or, or in the alternative, first penny disclosure, and also requiring their reports. To, again, we talk about which lobbyist is giving what legislator what gift for what what bill. I mean, if 
what, what what we've what we've done as again in that that previous lobbying bill we we per passed the perception of reform, and uh, and that's what happens when you when you do a bill that is just a pretend bill. You take the pressure off for real reform. So it's something that um, right thinking legislators ought to be um, advocating for. And I think you mentioned before on this other this final slide that lobbyists do have a disclosure. But in 2006, it was just like a sham bill. Yeah, I mean, and it, it didn't it, really do the enough. The disclosure requirements again; they uh, it lets everything uh, fly, everything important to fly under, under the, the radar. radar. Yep. Well, thank you very well, much, thank you. Representative Keep up your great work. Yeah. I know. Just I was looking up the League of Women Voters' position because, as you know, the League has positions that date back decades yes. in terms of promoting good government. And so I looked last night and it said, the League of Women Voters of the United States, that means local, state, and national levels, believe that the methods of financing political campaigns should ensure the public's right to know, which right mm -hmm. along with your line, combat corruption and undue influence, which we've seen, enable candidates to compete more equitably for public office, and allow maximum citizen participation in the political process. So as League members and legislators, we all agree that this is an important lift for all of us to work together to make a difference for good government in our Commonwealth. And again, I'd like to thank Representative Vitale for his time today and for his continuing efforts to do the right thing, not only for his constituents, but for our Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you.